Hey guys, back for one of my normal reviews. Um, today I will be reviewing All Hail Megatron number 8, and I am so excited to be reviewing this issue. It, this is full of awesome sauce. Oh, and before I forget, um, I have promised a shout out to my subscriber FanaticDude7. Thanks for being such a cool subscriber and commenting on my videos all the time. I really appreciate it. So, All Hail Megatron 8. Wow. Okay, um, let's just, let's just jump right into this awesome thing. The cover is obviously a Trevor Hutchinson cover, which is probably why I like it so much, but, um, strong cover. Good cover to a good issue. So the issue starts off in the past, and we get a very interesting scene between Sunstreaker and Ratchet. I think I've mentioned this before, but in case anyone doesn't know, this series is a continuation of the Asians series. Um, and, and for anyone who doesn't know, in the Asians series, Sunstreaker became a headmaster and was bonded with a human named Hunter. So in this scene, Ratchet is talking to Sunstreaker, and we find out that Sunstreaker and Hunter have finally been unbonded, basically. Um, and Ratchet is saying that Sunstreaker should basically be to his normal self. Hunter, he's never going to be fully human again, but he's a strong kid and he's doing, you know, he's doing okay. And Sunstreaker isn't responding. He's kind of quiet and doesn't look very happy. And that's the end of that scene. Then we jump to, um, Cup and Ironhide having a little discussion. Just because I've mentioned Cup's cigar in the past, I think it is very funny. Um, Ironhide... Men, um, Ironhide has this line, um, so I, so I just sit here then watching you chew on that thing, um, and then he says, like, they haven't made them in hundreds of years, and then he gets cut off so he doesn't talk about it anymore, but I think it's really funny that they're, um, directly mentioning the fact that Cup is chewing on this cigar-esque thing. I don't know what it is. Interestingly enough, um, it shows how Ironhide really wants to always be in a position where he knows what's coming, and so kind of the situation that the Autobots are in right now, he hasn't been able to see what's going to happen next and it's making him really nervous. But then their discussion gets cut off by gunfire in the background and they run out to see that they are being attacked by the swarm and Perceptor is still just shooting away at these things like crazy. Um, so then Cup says move out and that's the end of the scene. After that we're back on Earth and we get a very, very unsettling scene with um, the reflector or like the reflector brothers um and they're basically they've um two of them have found this group of humans um human survivors and they say do you want to play a game and then it switches back to the one that's not with them and he's sitting by himself and you can kind of hear through his comm link or something um that they're basically taking these people apart and then they talk about putting them back together and you don't see anything but just the implication is really disturbing. So yeah, that's that's really creepy. And as this is happening, um, Starscream walks by the lone reflector and comes up upon the Insecticons, um, whereupon he has a conversation with um, Bombshell, um, and Bombshell asks him, have you ever thought about the future of the Empire? And Starscream says, oh, I think about it all the time, and I need to talk to you about that. So it kind of seems like Starscream has an idea for um, either just Bombshell or Bombshell and the Insecticons in whatever he's planning against Megatron. He hasn't said he's planning anything, but it's Starscream, so you can kind of assume that he's planning something. We go back to the Autobots. So then Perceptor shows how totally kick what awesome he is in this, um, in this book. Um, he takes out, um, he takes out, um, these two bombs that, um, blow out the bridge so the swarm can't follow them, and the way he does it is very, very cool. Scepter then gets shot with a dart, um, by one of the members of the swarm that apparently paralyzes him. That's no good. So as they're moving across this bridge, um, Cub is like, well, I kinda was hoping Perceptor would be able to take out these bombs. Because, of course, you know, they need to be shot at. They wouldn't be, like, radio-controlled or anything. Smart think in their cup. Um, and without Perceptor, they don't have that, you know, good eye, sharpshooter person. Um, and Blur volunteers himself to go take him out. But Ironhide stops them and says, where's Sunstreaker? 
And then for a very, very quick second, it's a one page thing, we cut to Starscream, who is talking to someone that we do not know. It's, we, this person is never revealed to us. Um, and the other person um, says, do you think Megatron suspects? And Starscream says, of course he suspects. And then Starscream is talking about how he used to idolize Megatron, but now he's lost his way. And then he says that for this, and then he says for this other person to await his signal for, I guess, their plan or something. Um, and then that ends, and we see Sunstreaker standing all by him is lonesome, just kind of chilling, um, right in the middle of all these bombs and right in the way of the swarm. And, and Ironhide shows up and he's like, dude, what are you doing? We have to leave right now. Um, and then we have an interesting page that cuts between Starscream and Sunstreaker, and we find out through this page that Sunstreaker was, in fact, the one who sold out the Autobots. And what we find out happens was that Starscream promised him that they would be able to take out Megatron if Starscream had his help. And somehow Earth gets caught up in this deal between Starscream and um, Sunstreaker and Ironhide is just in shock that Sunstreaker has done this and Sunstreaker says, don't you see, no more Megatron at the cost of what, one planet? Basically, why Sunstreaker has done this is because he is so angry about what the humans have done to him um, back when he became a headmaster. Um, in one of these flashbacks, we see Sunstreaker say to Starscream that they have a deal on one condition, that the Decepticons kill every single human. So then as Sunstreaker is telling Ironhide that he's sorry, um, both him and Ironhide get shot by those paralytic dart things, and the swarm is very quickly um, approaching, um, and Drift comes out of nowhere. We haven't seen him through this entire issue. Drift understands what needs to happen and takes Ironhide, and they leave. And so Sunstreaker proceeds to shoot and activate the bombs, blowing up the bridge and killing him at the same time. And after this happens, um, Drift visits um, Ironhide a little bit later while Ironhide is in a med bay. Drift is just like, you have to understand, there is no way that this was just Sunstreaker. And actually, at the very end on the last page, we see what has happened to the other half of the Sunstreaker Hunter duo. Um, Bombshell actually has Hunter. Um, and I'm not quite sure what he's doing to him, but that looks... Um, pretty painful. So, yeah. Wow. This issue is just so chock full of all kinds of stuff. Um, we get to see so much emotion between Sunstreaker and Ironhide and the rest of the team. We get to see, obviously, who the traitor was, um, which is the biggest revelation of the issue. We get to see Hunter, who has not shown up at all throughout this series, um, and not only does he show up, he's not looking good. Um, we get to see more of Bombshell being the kind of super genius that he's presented as in All Hail Megatron. We see that Starscream has another person that he's working with to take down Megatron at some point. Um, and it's just, there is just so much stuff. I love this issue. And of course... And the fact that now Sunstreaker is dead. Um, I don't see him coming back anytime soon. Um, and I cannot wait to see how the last four issues of this series kind of wraps everything up. And it'll be very interesting to see where this goes. Tomorrow or so, I will have up my review for um, All Hail Megatron number 9, which will, of course, get me caught up with the series. And on Wednesday, Spotlight Jazz and Maximum Dinobots... Four, I believe comes out so I will probably have um, a spotlight jazz review coming up very soon and I may or may not start reviewing um, Maximum Dinobots and kind of do the last couple of issues of these series of um, All Hail Megatron and Maximum Dinobots together. Maybe if you guys have an opinion and um, if you'd like to see the Maximum Dinobots um, reviews at the same time that I'm doing the All Hail Megatron reviews, um, if you have an opinion on that go ahead and um, let me know and I'll listen to your um, opinions. Uh, but until then, I will see you guys later.